Now, moving on, for almost a decade, Indian and American space scientists have been working together to build a highly sophisticated satellite known as NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar. This is the first ever joint space mission by India and the U.S. To bring you more on this satellite, we on Correspondence at RTMP caught up with Dr. Paul Rosen, the NASA JPL project scientist of this mission. Take a look. India and the US are working on a joint satellite mission. They're calling it NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar. It's said to be one of the most expensive Earth imaging satellites. We're joined by Dr. Paul Rosen, who is the project scientist of NISA. So thank you for joining us. Please tell us, this is among the most expensive Earth imaging satellites. What are its capabilities? Well, it has two synthetic aperture radars, one at a long wavelength, one at a short wavelength. ISRO provided one of the radars, the one with the short wavelength. NASA provided the one with the longer wavelength. This means that we can operate basically in color. We have two different wavelengths, that means we have two different colors. So we can see the Earth with different colors. We can map, we can map globally uh, the forests. We can map globally the ice sheets and mountain glaciers and sea ice, and we can map globally, earthquakes, volcanoes, landslides, other hazards. We can do this every 12 days, two times, once on the ascending part of the orbit, once on the descending part of the orbit, to create a time series, basically a color movie of the Earth as it changes. This is unprecedented. It's expensive because it has unprecedented capability and an enormous amount of data. So what kind of science is expected to emerge? You know, in what kind of extra detail will you be studying the Earth and its natural phenomena? Well, let's, let's take the, the ice sheets, for example. We know that the ice sheets are changing. They're losing mass quite, quite quickly. We don't know the exact mechanisms for it. We don't know whether it's being driven by climate change or other mechanisms. We want to understand the mechanics of how the ice is changing. So by making these kinds of measurements, we're creating boundary conditions for understanding how the ice is changing. We can model that, feed those model results into climate models, then predict how climate will change. Crucial satellite components have arrived in Bangalore at the UR Satellite Center, UR Rao Satellite Center. So when can we expect launch? The launch date is at earliest January 29th. There's a, a, a thing called the eclipse uh, of the satellite as, it's in, as it goes around the orbit. There's an eclipse season, and that season ends at the end of January. We can't really launch before then. So after that, we're expecting maybe a few days up to a few weeks after that, maybe February. I'm not entirely sure. During the integration of the spacecraft now, it's sometimes things come up and you have to deal with those uh, technical issues and solve them. At the moment, things are going extremely smoothly. So if everything continues to go the way uh, it has been going for the last couple of months, we expect uh, shortly after this January launch window opens up. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. That was Dr. Paul Rosen of NASA speaking to Beyond World is One with video journalist Aragar from Bangalore, Siddharth MP, Beyond World is One. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.